we're going to just do um, breath exercise, breathing, just relaxing, focusing on um, softening your face and softening your shoulders. And you can do this with your eyes closed or your eyes open, whatever is comfortable for you. But I primary do this with my eyes closed, just a few seconds. If it's at my desk, if I'm around a, pe a lot of people or not, they have no idea what I'm doing because um, I don't go deep, but I just focus on breathing and letting things go. So let's try that for a minute. Just um, if you want to softly close your eyes and breathing in from the bottom part of your lungs and just breathing in and breathing out, breathing in again and breathing out, softening your face, your lips, your shoulders, letting everything go. Breathing in again, your good vibes and your love for yourself and breathing out all that love around you. Softening your hands and your arms and your legs and your feet. Breathing in and letting everything go. Just feel your breath, focus on your breath. Let everything else go. Breathing in and breathing out. Softening your shoulders and let your self soften the back, going down your back to your hips, to your legs, to your knees, and to your toes. Breathing out again and breathing in. Breathing out softly and in. So when you're ready, just gently open your eyes. How did it feel for you? Good. Um, both of my kitties always sit on the bed with me, so they're breathing with me. <laughs> one's right. very <laughs> nicely. So I had one hand on my belly and one hand on her. So it was uh, extra special. <laughs> Great, absolutely great. Um, that's something I always um, share and when I'm doing um, Reiki share is your breath is so important. We go through so much during the day. It could be a conversation. It could be getting to work. It could be even thinking of what you're going to do that day that kind of hypes us up and make us um, uncomfortable or anxious. Um, and that breath will just take you to a zone where it's nice and peaceful and allowing you to deal with things in a different way without um, being anxious of what you're going to say or what you're going to do or people around you with very different um, vibes than you have. And sometimes you can feel them, sometimes um, you can't, but it's just a wonderful tool that I use quite often for myself throughout the day. Um, and I try to remember when I don't use it to use it, you know, trying to like, okay, it's just time to just step back from the world situations, um, conversations, and just breathe. And it brings an inner peace to your mind and your body. It just actually really lets you relax. And, um, I think it's one of the most important tools we have. And I think it's the less used tool that we use for it. Um, people journal or people um, may do different things to just trying to calm their self down. But basically that breathing is everything as they say now. <laughs> yes, <Yeah. it> is. <laughs> so do you um, take time through the day and breathe? I have to. <laughs> Okay. It's a very difficult thing for me. Um, I also got into breath work a couple of years ago, and it's a tool that I never use. And every single time I use it, it's profound. So yes. why, why don't I do any of this on a regular basis? How baby? Um, oh. mm -hmm. yeah. 
That's the- well, I think it's I think it's habit forming or um, just like anything else um, when you get up. So this is what <clears throat> you may do and it may help you um, when you get up in the morning and um, use the bathroom, just take a moment and say, this is a time for me to breathe. So um, you can stand still before you brush your teeth or any minute because it is not a set time. You can do it in a couple of seconds. You can do it one minute and you'd be surprised that that one minute is just effective if you try to do it a couple of minutes. So start off, you know, just a few seconds, a few minutes and um, before you eat or you know, drink your smoothies or whatever you into coffee, say it's time to breathe or tea. So before, and mainly if you have a hot tea or coffee, you can inhale that if that's one of your favorite things, you know, and we, and I'm finding out too, <clears throat> eating slow and just um, enjoying the tea or the coffee and breathing around that you really get the aroma of that you get the comfort of the hotness that you feel and um maybe when you lay down at night um just before you fall asleep because it be so much in our mind the things that we didn't do that day the conversations we had everything so just breathe you know i'm going to breathe before i go to sleep and you're going to be amazed at that one breath before sleep, because all that busyness in your mind is just going to be gone because you're focusing, breathing in, filling your lungs up and breathing out. And I do another one at bedtime. I actually <clears throat> tell my body to relax as I breathe. I breathe in, shoulders relax, and I say it verbally. And you, or you can say it in your mind, shoulders relax. An amazing thing about that, <clears throat> your shoulders will relax. And I go down my body, I'll be saying, arms just relax. And I breathe in and I breathe out. And I give my arms a second to relax. And I go down to my hands and fingertips. I say, hands and fingers relax, because you never know. Or um, you never know that your body is completely tense doing things doing throughout the day. And um, to actually tell your body to relax, it responds to, to that mentally or, or verbally. And I go down to my hips, breathe in and breathe out. Hips relax. Then I do, a, I, I do the command, then I do the breath, hips relax, then I breathe in softly and I breathe out softly. Then I go down my legs to my knees, legs, thighs and knees relax. And I breathe in and I breathe out. And I have, and I go down to my ankles, ankles, relax. And I breathe in and I breathe out. Then I go down to my feet, feet and toes, relax. And I breathe in and I breathe out. And if I'm not completely Relax, then I go up from my feet, reverse what I did coming down. I go up and I said, toes and feet, relax. And I take a calming breath, a relaxing breath, and I just breathe in. And I breathe out. Then I go up to my knees, knees, relax. Also taking a in and out, calming breath, and not moving fast, just moving slow, like you're floating or just relaxing, getting used to the feel of your body when it's relaxed and when it's not relaxed. And I go up to my hips and I said, hips, relax. 
And then as you tell them to relax, if there's anything going on, you can actually feel if it's a tightness, maybe um, tiny pain or tension that you didn't notice before because you didn't, you know, spend a few minutes, a few seconds with it and telling it to relax and you breathe in and breathe out. And as you breathe out, you'll be amazed that whatever you may feel a little tension, a little tightness, it actually release that at that spot. And then you go up your back and say your back relax. And also just breathe in, taking your time and breathing out and going to your shoulders, repeating to your shoulders to relax and breathing in, breathing out, telling your arms and your fingers to relax, not forgetting your neck because we carry a lot of tension in our neck just by looking at the computer all day long working. So you breathe in and you say neck, relax and breathe out, softening your body and your face to relax because we don't even know that we carry tension between our eyes, um, just squinching up, looking at the computer or thinking a problem through. And you go and just say, ears relax, face relax, breathing in very gently and breathing out very gently softening your whole body and just relax and breathing in. And that's what you can do when you go to bed, just go from one part of your body to the next very gently and very slowly. And it really doesn't take that much time. And then when you reach your bottom of your feet and you feel that you still need to relax some more and get in touch with yourself, Start there. You end there when you start at the top of your head and your shoulders. And you can also come back up from your feet all the way back up to your shoulders and your neck and your face. And just having your body relax. Just being in tone with yourself. And as you speak to yourself verbally or mentally, you can actually feel each part of your body relaxing when you ask it to relax. It's an amazing um, thing to do for yourself during the end of the day. But if you're working from home and you need just a quick um, refresh, reset yourself, your mind, your body, and your spirit, you can stop and do that. And I guarantee you, you will be amazed how you feel, how your body feel. Um, I don't even really have words to put with it. It's just amazing feeling that you're actually relaxed doing this simple little thing and powerful thing that doesn't request. You feel it, <laughs> you feel it now? Yeah, actually, I was uh, kind of surprised by the results. So I have a lot of... Yeah, so we, telling my body to relax is um, quite quite effective. Oh, great! Great. Instead I'm, of suggesting, it was I was like I definitely gave it some commands and gentle ones, but it was kind of nice. That's great. So what you can do until it becomes um, part of your your um, wellness for yourself, self wellness, I call it um, checking in with yourself and just. Um, separating yourself from the day to day, the whatever your day looks like, everybody needs to just check in with yourself and breathe. And it's amazing because um, the doctors may say, do this, do that. I mean, walking is amazing too, but it's so much stuff going on. If you walk outside, you're, 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 you're hearing things, you're seeing people and that's, that's great too, to, to separate yourself from a lot of thoughts, but uh, I find the most effective is just breathing. Um, and you can also do that when you go to sleep, but you can also wake up your body in the morning before jumping down in the bed. Um, and as shortly, as longly as you want, you can say, good morning, self. 
we're going to have a good day, you know, putting positive words out over yourself and then just breathing. We're going to breathe in love right now for me. This is my space and who I am. And just close your eyes or open your eyes if you want to and look around your room and breathing in your love. Just saying, I am love. Good morning. Shoulders. Um, breathe in and breathe out in. My heart is full of love. Um, and put your hands over your heart and feel the beat and breathing in and breathing out and just waking up. And I'm going to wake up. I'm going to slowly um, bring my hands to a gentle fist and I'm going to release my hands. And as I bring them to a gentle fist, I'm breathing in. And as I release my hands, I'm breathing out. And then gently, this is a very good effective one, as I breathe in, I'm bringing my shoulders up to my ears and I'm going to breathe out and release my shoulders very gently. Let's bring your shoulders up to your ears again, very gently. Yeah, that's, that looks good. Mm -hmm. And breathe out and release them. The first time you did, it was like, but yeah, I'm very rigid. <laughs> I'm but the second time it was very gentle. And that's the way just waking up your body or helping your body relax during the day and, and just pushing everything that you had to do out of the way. As a matter of fact, when I do that exercise at night, I actually fall asleep because um, I'm not thinking about this, that, and the other. I'm just being conscious of my body and releasing the stress that I carry during the day. And it's amazing. I, you know, maybe I have to go through two rounds, maybe three sometimes, but I end up falling asleep doing the um, breathing exercise, the breath work. So yeah. And um, I, that just came for me to do. I never know what I'm going to share on, on sharing Reiki. I'll just let um, whatever um, comes to me or present itself, and I go with that. And so today, I was like looking at the time. I'm thinking it's one time, and it's actually another time. And when I looked at my phone, I still was puzzled. I couldn't Same. figure out why my phone was this time. Like how and, do we completely forget, even though they remind us repeatedly that right. This is the thing. <laughs> Right, Hopefully absolutely. they'll just do away with it and we don't have to worry about it next year. Yeah, that'll be great. That would be awesome. So um, today as I was um, coming down, rushing to my computer, I said, okay, so what am I going to share today? And it was um, intuition, our intuition. Um we always talk about the heart. We need to get anything out of our heart that no longer serve us. It could be um, having to forgive somebody and forgiveness is not for them. It's for us to um, let things go. It's gone, you know, and we might have to forgive them several times or maybe in a course of months. But I do know that if we practice forgiveness, that, um, it will, uh, it will be, it will come that we are able to forgive the most hurting things. Um, and it clears us, it clears our mind and body to be authentic self because for, um, holding on to any pain affects our body in so many different ways that um, it is, affect our mental, it affect us, um, our body being tensed and not well um, because we're giving so much energy to this negative thing. And um, I'm learning that forgiveness free me and it helps me to be the authentic person that I need to be kind. And we forget who we are. We become this other person and holding any resentment, any pain, any um, wrongdoing that somebody have done to us. So it's kind of just like a fresh air entering our lungs in our space. And it could be the most tiniest thing that um, 
somebody did, but it builds up to a mountain because we think about it constantly and um, we just have to forgive them. And I find ways of doing that so I, so I don't have to encounter the person. I write it down. I forgive you. And whatever I need to forgive you for, I write that down. And sometimes I just tear it up in little pieces of paper and just throw it away from me, you know, put it in the trash, take it out away from me. And um, so forgiveness is a powerful tool. It's, it's just as powerful as breathing. And um, sometimes we forget to forgive. We just keep on thinking about what that person done. So any forgiveness, um, the smallest, the largest, just start practicing forgiving the person. And sometimes we even fall in the um, category of forgiving ourselves, something that we may have forget to do for someone or assignment that we gave ourselves to do or we didn't do an assignment. Like every day I'm on this healthy weight thing and somebody might invite me out. And I'm like, okay, Pam, you still can pick from a menu, a salad. It's something, wherever you go, is always a salad on a menu. It's always a salad. <laughs> it's always a salad. No matter where you go. It's even McDonald's is a salad. So I like That's my motto for the day. There's always a salad. <laughs> <laughs> and you can make it as good as you want to. Just have to take time to... Um, cut up your stuff, your things that you like, and um, make it appealing, drizzle your dressing, take your time eating it, you know, um, loving your salad, like, oh, this is really a good salad, you know, just work with it. <laughs> but I had um, that happened to me on Friday, I had a really fabulous salad out with friends. And I was like, this was astonishingly good. <laughs> and I scoured yeah. the menu before. I was like, all right, weight management, you got to get a salad. So that's right. really funny. <laughs> You're speaking to and, me. And that's what I'm speaking to myself because <laughs> I said, um, I am ready to get this excess weight off. Um, I need to lose anywhere like 40, 45 pounds and maintain it. But people, and every time I set that goal for myself, and that's many times, somebody invite me out to somewhere that has a really fabulous menu that I haven't tasted in a long time. And I'm like, okay, but what I'm learning too is I can have a portion of that fabulous menu, but it has to be like a child sized portion mm -hmm. and eat it very, very slow. Like whatever it is, if it's a burger, then eat one third of it and um, eat my big salad <laughs> to go with it, you know? So it's a learning process and um, it's a commitment and it's definitely takes strength to do it because I'll flip, oh, what's dessert? What? <laughs> and there's fruity oh. cocktails and everything. I'm like, this just doesn't need to be a thing. Right, right, <laughs> right, right. But I'm also learning that have one and sip slow instead of, you know, cause your friends probably having two and three and five, <laughs> just, you know, sip your, your, your one and maybe not even finish it. Just get the um, taste and be done with it. Or that's, you know, when we fall into, um, okay, this is good. I'll have another one. Don't need another one. Really don't even need the whole one. Mm -hmm. But if you have to go there, just slow sips. And make sure you have water with lemon and, and drink, you know, from that, you know, just tricks and things that we need to put in our life that works for us that we don't feel like, oh, um, left out or not included. And no one even have to know what you're doing. You, you know, you're just sipping your drink. You know, if they want to gobble <laughs> theirs, let them gobble theirs up. Don't, you know, no, um, no judgment. So I, I, I'm in that space too. I, um, I'm i really trying to find out what's good for me without me feeling left out or whatever. But I do like salad, so that's great. Um, and you know how they put the little entree on the table or whatever, or the little appetizers. Eat one very slowly if you want it. 
and be done with it or not at all. Whatever you're feeling, just, just don't feel, you know, really guilty about it or left out or feelings hurt because you can't have it. Um, I did Weight Watchers for many years. I maintained my weight with Weight Watchers and Weight Watchers allow you to have everything anybody else is having, but the portion size is very small. But when I eat slow with the portion size, I am full and had enough. It's when I eat fast and not, not thinking, that's when I, I get into trouble with that. And I when I go out really fast too, I did it last night. I was gobbling something down. I love to cook. I spent such lovely time cooking and listening to my audiobook. I was shoveling food in my mouth and I was like, wait a minute, I'm not even enjoying it. I don't even know what this tastes like. <laughs> right. Absolutely. So, you know, when you eat slow, the taste, you can really taste mm -hmm. everything you put in your food. Very true. And what I, I do too, so long making or having yeah. to pay for so much food these days, not to enjoy oh, yeah. crime. <laughs> Absolutely. So what I do when I cook for myself, I um, get my containers out and I put a portion size in each container instead of trying to eat it. And then I say, okay, this is for tomorrow or later on today or something like that. And I noticed when I put them in a container and put them away from me, it's so much easier than leaving it out and eating from a bowl and putting it in a bowl. Mm -hmm. At least I know, you know, can I my portion size? Very true. So um, tell me, how are you feeling today? Um, I'm good. So I actually had taken a um, Reiki one and two with um, on zoom with uh, mm -hmm. one of my ladies up in upstate New York and I really wanted to refresh her course because I was kind of I don't know we didn't have any hands on I have a lot of pain in my spine um that runs down my sciatic nerve and I've been trying to do Reiki and get away from surgeries and whatnot so I was like let me try a refresher course I as you can see with the rigidity <laughs> in my mm -hmm. body um, I'm holding a lot inside of me. So I was like, all right, this is a perfect opportunity to release a lot of that, heal myself and then possibly others. So I took um, Alice's Reiki to refresher course, got all the hands on. I met a lot of friends. We've started hanging out. So it's it's kind of become like a beautiful community and community is very important. So, yes. I mean, I'm feeling every single day, I feel better. Um, the pain, I'm searching different avenues for it too. So um, it helps mental health with the pain associated is really tough. So Reiki's ex helped me in like extreme ways. So um, yeah, and I love this Reiki share 10 a.m. every Sunday morning. I was like, ooh, definitely can commit to that. and start my Sunday and my week off right so absolutely great news okay so I met Allison too but I was doing a time when all the craziness and I did it online with her mm -hmm. and it was amazing amazing um, I still feel did you go in as a group or did you I go I did I went in and actually I'm taking her Reiki three on March 25th I was like might as well just I had no idea about any of this and I actually it keeps coming to me. So I signed on to see if I could do a healing session with her. And she had a Reiki to refresh her course two weeks ago. I was like, well, I did not know that that was calling out to me. And it was fabulous. Her home's right down the street, about 30 minutes. Um, and then I was like, man, I'd really like to do this Reiki three course. And she said, I'd get into her monthly email and it's like Reiki three course on March 25th. I was like, I'm completely free that weekend. What are the chances? I've got to do this. So right. yeah, just the, the, her classes are very hands-on um, and very informative. So I definitely want to stick with them. They, I learned a lot, a lot. Great. And the community is fabulous. Like everybody's local. I actually went to a float therapy tank last night with one of the guys that um, we did Reiki to with. 
So, and then journaled about it afterwards. It's just, it's very so cool. So what is that? Yeah. I haven't heard that before. Oh, um, have you ever heard, they're like sensory deprivation. So you literally go into these float pods or open pools um, and the water temperature is the same as your body, the exact same. Um, and it's full of very high amounts of Epsom salt. So you, you cannot touch the bottom. You your whole body bounces to the top and you just float. So nothing is touching you. So it helps relieve like anxiety, pain. And I went for 90 minutes for my first time and you're just out in outer space. So I did breaking on myself for like the first 30 minutes and then just let go. Let go is a big thing I'm having trouble with. Um, I so think everybody I just, has trouble yeah. with letting go. <laughs> I just let go and floated out in space for 90 minutes. It was very cool. So I'm happy about my journal afterwards because they have a little like salt room you can sit in and drink your tea and journal. So um, the one I went to is right in Alexandria, but they're all over the place now. You can go anywhere. But and what is it called again? Um, it's called, let me see, why go to Synergy? It's called like I know it's called like a float tank. I call it float therapy. Hold on. Like if you Google float therapy, it'll come right up. Okay. Isolation tank. Yeah, it's basically a sensory deprivation tank. So you put earplugs in, no noise, no nothing. And you're just, it's a body of salt water that makes you weightless. Very oh, cool. Wow. So you're not Float touching tank. anything. I love okay. it. Can you put that in the chat box? I'm going to take yes. a picture of it because when I go upstairs, I'm like, what did she say? Yes. <laughs> and you're definitely going to, it's, it's unlike anything. Mm. And if you're open to what we're open to, everything in the universe. <laughs> yeah. There's a lot of messages that come in. There's, it's very cool. Float tank. Okay, did it come up on the chat? Okay. So let me ask you this. Do you have um, the friends that you and your Reiki share hang out? Um, where did it go, chat? Okay. Back up. Okay. Do you have your friends um, give you Reiki? Um, yes. So this is all like very, very new. Like I just took her class two weeks ago. So um, I've been coming to the share and doing Reiki and then I do Reiki on myself. I'm just trying to get a little bit more exposure. So um, my friend and I are going to start. So but I, I kind of not yet. <laughs> We're working. Okay. On. okay. Yeah. I think that would be great for you yeah. to pick up this, you know, everything actually. And do you know that you can do it on Zoom too? Yes. So when I took my first Reiki one and Reiki two, um, I took them on Zoom, um, okay. which was, it was fabulous. I just want to make sure I have more hands on. So it was nice to yeah. do a combination, but um, yeah, I'm picking up those Reiki contacts <laughs> okay, from great. Alice, which is important for me. So working on it. Great. That's absolutely great. Yeah. And yeah. it's a great community she has. So. I really like myself here last week. So yeah. Yeah, she's a sweetheart. I love her. She's a good teacher and you can feel the goodness around her. Yes, just, you just... can. I walked into her house. I was like, oh, this is where I'm supposed to be. <laughs> yeah, you can. I haven't been there. It's so amazing. I might um I'm gonna check and see if I don't have anything on my calendar. I might do Reiki three with y'all. Do I'm it. Glad you I, I saw it the other day when I was looking at her email and you know how you glance at something and just keep on going. But um, I've been meaning to come do an in-house with her because everything I learned from her was online, which was amazingly yes. great. Yeah. So, but, but it's I very cool to be able to do like hands-on. We do a lot of, um, hands-on learning and demonstrations she's like all right let's you know everybody get around we're doing I was like this is so cool <laughs> but her house is just full of goodness and crystals and her energy it's very awesome so um yeah we had people in our last class uh we had a girl drive down from Queens up in New York wow <laughs> um someone came from stop biting me please from 
somewhere in Virginia, it was over two and a half hours away. We had people come in from all over and they're like, we've had her for Reiki one. We were dying to come in person and the drive was worth it. Drove down, drove right back. Really? Yeah. That's so, interesting. Okay. Yeah. It was pretty cool. So I consider myself spoiled that I'm right down the street. Yes. <laughs> so that's a blessing. Her bubble and everything when I, she hears me talk. <laughs> that's okay that's she's like circling the computer right now like that's okay <laughs> that is good she's let her reiki yeah. cat she's here yeah, for let, every single it, every single reiki conversation let, let her be her because mm -hmm. cats are really in tune to a lot of things yes so i like i was saying hey baby <laughs> <laughs> i was saying on um, intuition how beautiful oh she's so cute <laughs> So how are you with your intuition? I'm still like, you're, um, okay, so your intuition comes at you in waves and it comes at you at certain times with me. And I find out it's, it's usually, and I have to get in tune with it more, it's the thought that I'm not actually having or thinking. It's just like, boom, a little pop coming in. I separate it. I explain it. Um my intuition, and I guess everybody else's, is, is, is not your thought. It's just something that just pop up. You could be in the middle of a conversation with a friend, a coworker, family member, or whatever. And then something just like, you know, it's hard to put in words. Oh, you have a thought, you had a feeling, you have, people call it gut feeling for intuition. But you know something that's right or something's not right. Somebody's lying to you. Um, something that you need to do at that moment, um, call somebody at that moment. Um, and the thing about it is 80% of the time, we don't act on our intuition. It could be more or less in, in terms of numbers. We let it float away because it comes so quick and it goes so quick. It's not like it lingers there. It just gives you an impression, a feeling. Um, a knowing, I call it. And then it's gone. It's just like, if you don't catch it, if you don't respond to it at that time, um, it's gone. It comes and go like a flash. You may see a flash when you're driving or or something. So I, I want, um, you know, us to be as people, as Reiki um, people that we need to really Horn in on our intuition, even when you're doing a Reiki service to somebody or to yourself, sometimes you have an impression to stay there, stay right at that area a little longer because, you know, we scan the body going up and down and around and you can feel the heat sometime and a cold or the tingling. And sometimes you don't have to feel anything, but your intuition say, stay there. Or, you know, send more Reiki there. And um, that's what I'm working on in my life. And I want it to be my daily life as well as I do Reiki sessions to be open to my third eye, my intuition, my gut, my heart when it tells me to stay there, do a little bit more. And I love Allison's trying training it is yeah. so fabulous because i had training from another um reiki master and they just you know being sensitive of your hands but um my girl she be having you pull that stuff out yeah chopping it up brushing my it away other teacher was very quick i mean i swear our classes ended in like less than three hours and i was kind of left like well, what do i do now um, there were no hands on, there was no any of that. So I was like, please somebody help me. Yeah. So yes, Alice is like, all right, everybody upstairs, let's go. <laughs> uh-huh. Uh-huh. And not only that, um I just love her class and her personality. I can see, you know, I, from taking the class from the first lady, which was good because yeah. I didn't know anything else, but I, you know, she just did a Reiki and maybe the brushing part, but my girl, she get in there and pull it out, chop it up, um, brush it away. Um, and it's just wonderful. It's yeah. wonderful. I can actually, you know, um, visualize 
the pain, the problem coming away from that person and being brushed away from them. And I also like the part where she invite our angels in to help us with the session. Yeah. And she sent recently, I think it's just me and one other person from the Reiki 2 class that she sent us the manual for, for Reiki 3. So it might be nice and small, Mm -hmm. um, which is brilliant. Our last class is pretty big. There is like 12, 13 people and we were, there's a lot. So still fabulous. But I think this one might be a lot more hands-on and she sent us the manual for it. And I was like, I cannot wait. (laughs) There's so much stuff that she's about to show us in there. So Mm -hmm. yeah, I think it's worth you coming. (laughs) Yes, absolutely. I think I will. I think I'll get in touch with her this week and see if I can come to that class. Yeah. But um, so I, I, like I said, I want to touch on your intuition because it, it comes in to me like, um, a flash calming it is so many different things but you know it's not your thought or what you was thinking or um and and I want us to respond to it any way that we're supposed to respond to it if that's back off of a person that you think oh this girl this man is just so so kind and that'd be their outer person that they just want somebody to see and something keep telling you Something ain't right with this person, but you just keep on responding to the outer shell that they're projecting, or um, it could be, hmm, should I send this email? And something saying, no, don't send this email, rethink it, stop, and you push send any hand, and then there's a lot of backwash from it, but something told you not to send, and it could be a pleasant email. It doesn't have to be like, you did not give me the correct whatever so I can do this. It could be just taking a moment, stepping back from it, breathing and asking, well, what should I do? What should I change? What, how should I respond? Because something's telling you not to respond the way that you would normally do. And there's nothing wrong with that. But something is your intuition, your gut is telling you, Take a moment and step back, breathe. Look at the email they sent you before because sometimes we miss things in our haste. Um, I was cooking the other day because I like to cook too. And I try to put all my ingredients on a counter, but I left one ingredient on another table and I cooked it, put it in the oven. I said, something's wrong. And then I looked over, I'm like, oh man. <laughs> so it's just time. like- yeah. Oh man. I left that Worth out. The That's really story. Important. You're like, how did I forget that? That was the one thing I came here for. Right. How? <laughs> I'm not going back. <laughs> right. Right. So I write little notes, mainly when I go to the store, I put it on my phone. I take a look, I have a little tiny pad. I, I write what I need so I can look back because I have done it too many times. So um, this week, focus on your intuition and I think we have it um on a daily basis or when it needs to come and and kind of like boom tell us something and kind of hesitate um hesitate if you don't quickly do it if it's something that you need to mm, is this right or whatever you know maybe that but if you know it's right and your gut and everything lined up and say don't do it. Don't do it. If it tell you to do it, do it. You know, just getting a getting an intimate, stronger awareness of your intuition because it's yours. It's not mine. I have mine. You have yours. So it's a personal, intimate thing that we don't look at it as that. But I think it's like an angel or whatever because. It's not your your thinking at the time is, and but it comes to you strongly, sometimes. Oh, like it could be like, you didn't lock your car, and something say, and you go back and your car wasn't locked, and you lock your car. Um, it could be something that you had to get in your trunk. You put it in there. You said you'd get it and take it in the house, and something said, look in your trunk, and you're like, 
you know, because it comes so quickly. I know you know what I'm, that you just keep <laughs> on like, oh, let me just go on because your mind is on something else. So we're not open and in, open for when our intuition hit us sometimes because we're so focused on other things. So let us um, quietly just put your hands on your forehead. And then just breathe in and breathe out and speak to our intuition. We thank you. I thank you. She thank you. We thank you when you come and let us know when things are right and when things are wrong, when we need to, to hear and be a part, to know, help us. Guide us, never leave us. Let our mind and our spirit and our heart know when you're speaking to us, know when to respond, know when not to respond, but when you're telling us no and when you're telling us yes. When you're telling us if something's going on that we need to be aware of or if something as simple as we forgot something that we need to take out the house with us to the purpose of us going out the house. Let us always be around out, be conscious of our surroundings. Let you protect us in our conversation and our doing and our compassion for others. Showing us what we need to do when we're doing breaky sessions on somebody or ourselves where to place our hands, where to pull pain away from us, where to smooth out, where to breathe in and breathe out. Thank you for being part of our conscious, our hearing, for being with us and letting us know Letting Al be so much a part of you, our intuition, that we know what we know when we know it, that you speak to us in kindness. Now placing our hands on our heart, clearing out anything in our heart that no longer belongs there and bringing in light and joy and peace in kindness, letting us know we are more than enough. That we forgive ourselves and others. We will not hold that darkness or pain inside of our heart, but only light resides in our heart, peace and joy, loving, self-love. We'll take the place of anything and everything that we are love, that you give us enough every single day, fresh love. Taking your hands and placing it on your throat, that I will speak my truth. I will honor myself and love myself. I will encourage myself, encourage others. My voice is also an instrument of healing. I love myself. I will be kind to myself. And I am more than enough and who I choose to share my life with. I will encourage the person, encourage us. Love my pets. Encourage them, speak love over them. I am enough. Take your hands and place them on top of your head. Our crown, our thinking. I am more than enough. My intuition, one hand over your forehead and one hand on your crown. 
I'll be open to my intuition and to my thinking. I will think good thoughts. I will know and I welcome my intuition as being completely part of me and being aware of it and knowing what I know and respond to that. Placing your hands over your ears. Our ears are very important. We hear things, news, friends, loved ones. We hear cry for hope. It's a very important, very important part of our body, one of our senses we hear. And we respond to our hearing. But sometimes we need to take a moment and just hear, breathe, and then respond. Placing your hands over your throat again. I will speak life over myself each and every day, peace over myself. I will speak encouragement over myself and love over myself because I am enough. I am special, I am important, I am loved. Loving myself is the most important thing, then I will, I will share my life with my friends. I will speak truth, I will speak encouragement over myself and over my relationships. My angels will guard, guard me, take care of me, protect me, heal me, and let me know what relationship is true and full of love and what relationships are toxic and need to be let go. And I am strong enough to let the toxic relationships go. Embrace myself first, love myself first. And through the love that I have for myself, I have love for others, pure and simple, kind and loving because I am love. Place your hands over your eyes very gently. I will see with my natural eyes and understand. I will see with my spiritual eyes when I'm in Reiki session and let me know where to hover my hand for the healing. My eyes are the windows of my soul. I will have compassion, love, understanding for myself first and for others. I am enough. I am love. I am strong. I am determined. I am kindness. I am enough. Placing your hands on your belly. I will feed in one hand over your heart, my soul and my natural self, the things that I need. I am strong enough to not overfeed by bringing in more than I can deal with at that time. And it could be emotions, friends, family, coworkers, neighbors. I am love. My body is healthy. My body is healing. And placing your hand anywhere that you need to have healing at and bringing in your healing and thanking the universe, the Reiki masters, your angels, your guardian angels for the healing. And breathing in that healing and breathing out any sickness, any pain that no longer belongs to you and letting it go. Now just put, place your hands, palms down on your knees. I am strong, capable, loving, peaceful. I am more than enough. I'm healing from the inside out. And this knowing that Reiki is going through your knees, going through any part of your body that needs healing, 
anywhere pain resonates. And asking and thanking Reiki for healing. And the healing will continue even when we move our hands off our knees. I am strong. I am healing. My hands are a healing instrument that comes through the higher power. I believe, I know, and I will heal completely. And I will be a healer for others as well as myself. Bringing your hands to folding prayer hands over your heart. I thank my higher power. I thank the universe. I thank myself for being open and knowing that I can and will be healed. That my hands are used to heal myself and to heal others. That my eyes are used to heal myself and others. My voice, it will be used to heal myself and others. And my hearing will be used to heal myself and others. My intuition is very strong to be used to heal myself and others. Relax your hands. Take a breath in, a gentle breath, breathing in. And breathing out, feeling your breath go in and out. Breathe several times on your own, just in and out. Breathing in, healing, breathing out, healing around you. Breathing in, healing, going to any and every part of your body. Breathing from the inside out. And when you breathe, the, um, when going out, the healing is around you, around your space. Breathing in one more time, in and out. Relaxing your shoulders and softening your face, softening your heart, softening your body, relaxing. Breathing in one more time, gentle breath going in and out. And stating to yourself in your mind or verbally, I am healing my back, my spine, my leg, my heart. My mind is healed. My body is healed. My heart is healed. I am healing as I'm healed. Taking your hands again, putting them together, putting them over your heart, feeling the love, taking your hands, palms down over your heart, over your belly, or wherever your intuition is telling you to place your hands. It could be at your throat, your ears, your back, your hips, following your intuition and let the healing of your hands that goes through you from your higher self to the place that need to be healed. And just take a moment and quietly breathe in and breathe out. Softening your shoulders and your back. And we usually tense up when we feel something, pain or uncomfortable or for any reason. But right now, just softening your back and your shoulders and your arms and your legs. Very gently relax your hands. And when you're ready, very gently open your eyes. Okay. Bye. <laughs> Thank you. Sorry, I have a strict 11 stop time. I, I very much appreciate it. It was good to see you and I hope to see you at Reiki 3. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Pamela. Take care. Bye-bye.